morning, everybody. Good morning. Happy Lord's Day. Happy Lord's Day to you. Uh, this morning, before I get started with the sermon, I'm going to do like I've done the past uh, couple weeks. We're going to do uh, part three, going through uh, our statement of beliefs I put together. Um, to sh just show how important this is, I've already had people disfellowship me because of my two I've already read, which were pretty basic. Uh, people that were acquaintances uh, dusted their feet off with me and had nothing to do with me anymore. So uh, it, it, it is important to go over these things and make them clear to everybody. Now, thankfully, it was no one here uh, locally, which... Yes, yes. Um, different aspect of it, but uh, that was the issue, the deity of Jesus and the, he and the Godhead. Uh, we won't get into that this morning because uh, that is very important and that is why we need to be clear about it. And uh, I've been pretty... I mean, I've been pretty uh, consistent about it over the past couple of years. Uh, I have touched on it many times. So, um, it is important. But this is mainly for our local group, but it is good to let everybody else know what we believe. Um, we're going to go and we're going to cover a couple tenets this morning. first one's going to be uh, concerning sin. It says, concerning sin, we believe that sin is the transgression of God's law. 1 John 3, 4, that all have sinned. Romans 3, 23, that death, cessation of life, is the penalty for sin. Romans 6, 23, and James 1, 15, that God has imputed Adam's sin to all men, thus making making all mortal and corruptible. Romans 5, 12 through 14, that Jesus the Christ alone has immortality. 1 Timothy 6, verse 16, and that God will likewise impute the righteousness of Jesus to all Christians. Romans 5, 15 through 19, and through Him Christians will be resurrected unto eternal life after the death at the resurrection. John 5, 29. Uh, this is this is pretty important too because um, most unfortunately most professing Christians don't know what sin is. Um, they think just sin's being bad, and then if you say, "Well, uh, sin is a transgression of God's law," like, "Oh no, no, God's law has nothing to do with it." But if you go to First John, it identifies that sin is a transgression of God's law. It's a word to identify it. Next one uh, is concerning the Holy Spirit. Now, I will admit this needs to be expanded a little bit. Um, I need to expand it some more, uh, not to change anything that's written here, but just to say more about it. But it says this, Concerning the Holy Spirit, we believe that the Holy Spirit was given to us Christians as a gift. Acts 2.38, John 15.26, In Christ's absence on earth in physical form to testify of Christ, to lead our brethren into truth, and to convict the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. John 16.7-14, in Romans 8.26, in 1 Corinthians 6.19. Uh, I haven't done it yet, but I need to expand on how the Holy Spirit, and I've already done it in past ones, but how the Holy Spirit is indeed God as well, the one God. Second one here is concerning baptism. Um, this is one that, uh, along with communion, communion, that I plan to do some studies on here in the future because there's a lot that can be said concerning this subject, much more than I have written down here. This is basically a summary of what we believe concerning it. It says here, concerning baptism, we believe in adult believer water baptism by submersion in the name of Jesus Christ, Acts 2, 37 through 39, in which the believer identifies himself with Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, Matthew 3, 13 through 15, Romans 6, 3 through 5, Mark 16, 16, Matthew 28, 19 through 20, and Acts 2, 38. We believe in 20-year-old believer baptism according to the, quote, age of adulthood, end quote, given in Romans 32, verse 11, and Deuteronomy 1, 39, in order that the believer is mature enough and fully understands the importance of what baptism is for and what it represents. That's the end of that one. Uh, that, there's a lot that can be said there um, on that. And there's a lot of different opinions and views on that. Uh, one of the major ones is 
Baptism is submersion in water fully. Uh, a lot of people disagree on that, and I don't really understand why, because the word itself means immersion. In fact, um, I, had, I brought the uh, uh, apostolic, uh, apostolic Polyglot Bible here a few weeks ago, and I, I really like that because in that Bible, along with changing Gentiles to nations, baptism is immersion throughout the entire Bible, which will totally um, expose those who believe that sprinkling is baptism. No, by definition, if you read it, what the words actually mean, just like with Gentile or nation, sprinkling um, is not baptism. It's not immersion. And uh, immersion, submersion, uh, depending on which one you want to use. So there, there is differences, but that is what it uses. And... Um, Another thing is we believe in believer baptism. We don't believe in baptizing or sprinkling babies because they cannot profess faith, they can't profess Jesus. They don't necessarily believe that we know of, of anything at that moment in time. They are just babies. And uh, no matter how hard you look, you can look through the entire New Testament and Old Testament, and there is not one instance of an infant baptism or sprinkling at all. So that's pretty important. Um, and a lot of people hang up on that, and they'll try to fit it in and, and speak from a doctrine from silence, but um, it's not there. No matter how much you want to put it in there, it is a tradition of man. And we believe that. That is a very important belief. Um, just real quick, concerning the age that a believer is baptized, you know, we all believe in 20-year bapti baptism. Um, but I, I don't necessarily believe if someone is baptized at 18 or 15 that it doesn't count. Um, it's really between them and the Lord. When we start judging other people's baptisms, we've got to be very careful because then what about our own? You know, the one baptism that we can rely on fully is the one mentioned in Ephesians, where, which is Jesus' baptism. His was perfect. And his completion of everything that he had to do to be a perfect sacrifice was perfect. We're imperfect. You know, I mean, I've heard people argue that uh, you need to be baptized um, in Jesus' name in Hebrew um, or English. Well, what if we have that wrong? Well, it gets really complicated and pharisaical at that point. Yeah. And... Uh, there, there's a lot, yeah. Which name is it? Which pronunciation? Uh, uh, a lot of people have. Yeah. And uh, I don't believe God is that complicated when it comes to these things. But we do believe these things. And uh, I'll get into more of it in another study. But uh, it is something important, something that a lot of believers are very confused on. And I'm not saying we're not confused on some aspects of it. I'm not saying we have it all figured out. But that is what we believe. And I know a lot of people will have issue with that, uh, but we'll, we can cover it all in another study. But uh, the fact that in Scripture you have everybody that has ever been baptized was a believer and could confess with their mouth is very, very obvious and um, very something that we need to proclaim. Last one I want to cover this morning is concerning communion. This is another one that could be expanded uh, quite a bit. But it says here, concerning communion, we believe in the ordinance of communion as established by Jesus the Christ. Matthew 26, 26 through 29. 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 26. Where we as a congregation who are baptized in 20 years old of age partake of unleavened bread and fruit of the vine together as a memorial to remember the sacrifice made for us by our Lord Jesus the Christ, we partake of communion weekly and yearly at Passover. Um, there's different views on this. I don't believe in the children taking of communion until they get uh, older. Um, there's people that disagree. There's some people that believe that um, you give them the bread and not the uh, fruit of the vine, because at Passover in the Old Testament, they, uh, they did partake of the meal, and communion is a type of Passover. Um, that's something that I had never even considered until recently. Um, I never even heard of it. But there is people that believe that. 
Um, and there's different people that differ on the timing of it, the frequency of it. There's some people that do it once a week, some people once a month, there's some people that do it once every six months, once a year. Um, I even talked to one fellow the other day uh, that said that the church he attended hadn't done it in three years. <laughs> um, you know, uh, there's arguments to be made uh, within the year time span, but I think three years, I think you just don't believe it if you have, you've done it's been that long since you've done it. But we believe in doing it weekly. Uh, I think that it is important to do weekly. I will say we need to be very careful as a congregation to make sure the frequency of it doesn't dull our senses to the importance of it. That is something that we all need to be aware of. And uh, just make sure that we have our hearts and our minds right in remembering of it. But I will say one benefit that I've noticed with us taking it weekly and going through and reading the gospel account, the children they hear it over and over. And um, we read the, uh, the account of the resurrection and the crucifixion um, several times a month, if not once a week often, depending on the scripture that we read. And the, all the little children, I have heard them all repeat things that just by repetition. Uh, I know it's for us as adults, you know, we hear it over and over and read it, but the children do hear it. So that is an added benefit. They will remember these things. So that's all I have on that this morning, um, and we'll cover next week. We'll continue covering those, uh, those tenets, which I think are important. And like I've said before, anyone here locally, if they have a problem with anything that I've said, please let me know. Uh, we need to discuss it, because that's what, what it was for.